We're going to open this up with a few words from our friends who were pepper sprayed and arrested on Friday. Please show them some love. Show them some solidarity. Hello, my name is Ian Lee. I'm a freshman here at UC Davis, and three days ago, I was one of the many students pepper sprayed for a non-violent, peaceful sit-down on this very quad. I've never been one to make a speech or draw attention to myself, but last night I watched an Aggie TV interview with Chansa Katehi that was so filled with lies that I knew I had to raise my voice. Yeah. This will be a very short speech. I title it, Responses to Three Lies Pepper uh, per <laughs> Perpetuated by Chansa Katehi. Lie number one, that Chansa Lie number one, that Chancellor Katehi ordered in riot police because the camp was, quote, unsafe. Well, I have a question for you, Chancellor Katehi. Questions inspired by Professor Ostertag. Have you ever been to a frat party on this campus? Or what about a, what about a sports game? The fact is... The fact is, you know that camping on the quad is perfectly safe. You know you are not concerned with the safety of our students. Or hey, here's another hypothetical. What if our UCD camping group, Outdoor Adventures, wanted to camp on the quad? Would you have sent fully armed riot police on them? No, of course not. So you've got to admit that the only reason you sent in riot police was because of the political intentions of our movement. You You've got to admit you sat in riot police because you were scared of our right to think and assemble. You've got to admit you sat in riot police because your position fundamentally stands opposed to our right to freedom of speech. Lie number two. Lie number two, that police were following normal protocol and pepper spraying us. This is patently untrue. As I'm sure everyone here knows already, on the 18th of November, Lieutenant John Pike used military-grade pepper spray on our students. This military-grade pepper spray is lethal to one out of every 600 people it is used on, and its medical effects are still unknown. This is why it is supposed to be used at a distance of at least 15 feet, not at point-blank range, and most certainly not repeatedly, back and forth, to add several layers. Moreover, military-grade pepper spray is only to be used against violent protesters. I ask the question, how do, students sit, how do students sitting down, linking arms in any way, shape, or form suggest violence? Do students simply talking with one another, exchanging ideas, make you violently scared? Do students exercising the First Amendment right to speech and assembly make you viciously tremble? Cry out loud, this is a university! Line number three, that Chancellor Katehi should remain in her position because she is good for our university. And let, me, and let me respond to this one with a personal take. I have a friend. Her name is Losa, and she is a high school senior back in my hometown considering attending our university. I was talking with her over the phone, and she told me that as long as Chancellor Katehi holds her position as Chancellor of our university, she's afraid. Frightened, terrified to come to our university. She's afraid because she fears not being able to express her First Amendment rights. She fears not even being able to sit on the quad and exchange ideas. She fears living under a militarized university under a belligerent, violent, and cruel chancellor. I ask you one more question, Chancellor Kentucky, and I ask this with the utmost sincerity. Do you honestly think your presence at the university is good? Thank you. My name is David Bouchot, and I, I attended my first protest last Tuesday in Morak Hall. <laughs> it was fun. It was a good time if you guys were there. But that's not why I'm here. <laughs> um, on Thursday night, as you guys probably know, we set up an encampment of about 25 tents right in the center of that quad. We had a kitchen, it was clean, we had garbage cans, there's, it was easy to walk through the camp, we had study parties, there were people playing music. It was the safest, most welcoming environment I'd ever been in.
And then at noon the next day, we got a letter from Chancellor Katehi saying, this is unsafe, you have to leave by three o'clock. She didn't say any reason why it was unsafe. Boo! So we put our heads together and we said, if you want to leave, you can leave. And you know, five people, five people br broke down their tents and they left. And that's fair because it actually was in their tents and they didn't want to get their tents broken. You know, so we talked about it and we decided to stay. And my friends and I, we drew a hopscotch, an epic hopscotch, down the sidewalk. And then someone ran up yelling, riot police. Yelling, riot police, riot police. And we didn't know what to do, it happened so fast. We threw all our stuff into the middle of the circle, we held hands, and we started chanting, because we didn't know what to do. People were walking by, they started, they started videotaping with cameras. The cops came up, the, one, the police officer yelled something, we couldn't hear it, I'm assuming it was in order to disperse. We kept chanting, they went into the circle without any incident, they started breaking down the tents, they started pulling my friends, my friends from that circle and throwing them on the ground and putting them in handcuffs and dragging them away. At that point, there was no more encampment. There was no more stuff there. We were just kids sitting down in a circle, singing. <laughs> but the cops didn't leave. They did not leave. There were 150 people or so watching us. We yelled, join us, join us. And in the proudest moment of my life, those kids came to us and they sat down in that circle with us. They joined us. But it wasn't over, because the cops kept picking kids out, throwing them on the ground, and arresting them. They, they put them in a circle just south, right over there. And I saw my friends lying on the ground, surrounded by cops in riot gear, and I thought, this is not right. This is not okay. We are just, we're kids. We're just kids. And so, me and a dozen of my friends went, and we sat just south of those cops. We sat down. Eventually, let me cut to the chase, because I'm sure there are other people that want to speak. The cop, our police officer came to us and he said, if you guys don't move, we're going to shoot you. So we turned around. There were two police officers with paintball guns pointed point blank behind us. That officer probably realized that shooting us in the back would have looked bad and would have been not that effective. So, and I'm told at this point, Behind us, he shook up the pepper spray and he held it up for the crowd to see. I had no idea this was going to happen. Someone yelled, oh my god, pepper spray, and I closed my eyes. My girlfriend, I had, my arm was around my girlfriend and I kissed her on the cheek. My friends, my friends buried their faces into their chest and then it happened. And then I, at that point I entered a world of pain. There was hot... It felt like hot glass was entering my eyes. I couldn't see anything. I wanted to open my eyes, but every time I did, the pain got worse. I wanted to breathe, but I couldn't because my face was covered in pepper spray. And every time I breathed, I was nauseous. I couldn't see anything. I could feel my friends and my girlfriend writhing in pain. I wanted to cover her face, but I couldn't because my hands were covered in pepper spray. I didn't know where the police were. I didn't want to stand up because I thought I would be arrested. I was afraid. I was no longer a protester. I was an object. And that's, that's what the police officer wanted to turn us into. But we sat there and we didn't move. I was paralyzed with fear. And that's the truth. I was paralyzed with fear. Um, all right, I'm sorry. I'm probably rambling on at this point. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say here, this is what I'm trying to say. If you guys know what happened in the last two protests, not a single student was violent ever. Not a single student resisted arrest. Not a single one. And so I ask you guys, out of respect for me and my friends, who sat there and allowed a police officer to point blank, spray pepper spray into our face three times while we looked him into the face. Do not choose a path of violence. 
Our, our best weapon is the path of violence. Their only weapon is violence. That is why we will prevail. That is why we must prevail. I want us to take back this university brick by brick, and we will do it with dignity and respect. Hi. My name is Avka, and I chose to stand with my students, to sit with my students in solidarity on the pathway. Um, I'm just going to share my testimony and let it speak for itself. Um, after the two initial sprays, I was singled out as an individual and sprayed directly in the face. Um, I was ripped from my fellow students and thrown into the crowd. I was blind. My skin was on fire. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what was going on. I was terrified. I was then carried to the ambulance. Um, fortunately, someone found me with baking soda and began to treat my eyes. I was blind for about 30 minutes, um, and my body was in excruciating pain. I was taken in the ambulance to the hospital and was given IVs to my eyes with saline solution. That night, I couldn't sleep. I, was, I felt unsafe. I felt terrified. And this is disturbing to me. I should not feel unsafe on my own campus. At the same time, I felt empowered. I felt empowered by our peaceful and nonviolent protest. And I feel that as we continue to be peaceful and nonviolent, we can make, we can make change. My name is Ellie Pearson and I too was pepper sprayed on Friday and I quickly want to address the claims that Chancellor Katehi has made that our encampment was unsafe because non-UC Davis community members were there. First, I want to point out that that's a tactic of fear, teaching us to fear our community members. What do we have to fear from the, from the people that live in Davis? Absolutely nothing. They're here to support us. Not heard of. Second, I want to point out that attending university is a position of privilege. And that by excluding people who don't go to this university, it is classist and elitist. <laughs> Lastly, I want to define what a community member is. A community member is someone who will protect me. Someone who will hold my hand and pull me stronger as riot cops approach. UC Davis riot cops are not my community. And I don't want to see them on our campus ever again. Thank you. This is such a big crowd. <laughs> oh my god, so happy. Okay. Um, I was also one of the ones pepper sprayed. When we were sitting down linking arms and the bystanders started telling us, everyone turn around, you're about to be sprayed. I was, I was shocked. I spent the summer in Palestine and I was in demonstrations there where we were tear gassed. And I never ever thought that I would come back to Davis and experience that again. <laughs> I was horrified. Yeah, it was scary. Um, and this is such a beautiful crowd. But yeah, the police had no right to attack peaceful protesters. We were sitting down, chanting, nine vi we were nonviolent. And when the riot officer, uh, Pike, came, he was able to freely leave the circle to spray us. So the argument that, oh, the police were at risk, we were harming them, it was their safety, it's false. Because you were able to leave the circle yeah! and spray us. no idea I was sprayed. I saw poor David, who was just speaking, come out, and he was in pain. And I broke the link, 
and I helped him. And I was still so shocked. It, it was a horrifying experience seeing him like that, screaming, my eyes, my eyes, I can't see. Please, someone help me. It was horrible. Then I turn around and see that the crowd was able to push back the police non-violently. Yeah. 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 And I stood back. I was shocked at that again. Probably more shocked than being pepper sprayed. Because the police were retreating at our non-violent crowd protest walking. Um, <laughs> sorry. So yeah, that was my experience, but I'm honestly amazed. I'm a fifth year, Woo! Um, and I've never seen such a big crowd here today, and I'd like to thank every single one of you for being here and supporting your fellow students. Thank you. Her efforts are transparent. Her efforts are transparent. They are efforts to defer and displace criticism. They are efforts to defer and displace calls for her resignation. Calls now number in the tens of thousands. There is no place on our campus for administrators who order the use of force against peaceful protesters. I want to say briefly to wrap up that what will depose this authoritarian administrator is not letters or petitions. It is your direct action on this campus. Direct action, that direct action must continue, must continue until the Chancellor resigns. Until the Chancellor resigns. The Chancellor has said that it is not appropriate. The Chancellor has said that it is not appropriate for her to resign at this time. For her to resign at this time. We know that the Chancellor. We know that the Chancellor is not a very good judge of what is appropriate. Of Chancellor Katehi. The immediate of Two. Two. All police forces. All police forces. Ordered permanently off UC campuses. Yeah! Chancellor Katehi. 
police forces, and police forces are the primary threat to the health and safety of our university community. I love you all! I love you all! Solidarity Comrades! department at UC Davis. I'm joined by many of my colleagues here and we want to thank you for letting us participate. We are here to support the students of UC Davis. I'm going to read a short statement that our faculty is distributing widely. The faculty of the UC Davis English Department supports the board of the Davis Faculty Association in calling for Chancellor Katehi's immediate resignation and for a policy that will end the practice of forcibly removing nonviolent student, faculty, staff, and community protesters by the police on the UC Davis campus. Further, given the demonstrable threat posed by the University of California Police Department and other law enforcement agencies to the safety of students, faculty, staff, and community members on our campus and others in the UC system, we propose that such a policy include the disbanding of the UCPD and the institution of an ordinance against the presence of police forces on the UC Davis campus unless their presence is specifically requested by a member of the campus community. a genuinely collective effort to determine how best to ensure the health and safety of the campus community at UC Davis. I just want to remind us that the forms of violence we saw the other day were practiced in communities of color for a long time way before this. In communities of color. And in the developing world, people live with worse forms of violence than that every day. So while we have the 99%, we need to complicate that notion and start to work together against the lines they put us in. Because without working together, we don't have a movement. Osahan Ekator, and I'm a proud member of the black community here at UC Davis. <laughs> Police brutality and discrimination is nothing new to our community, Those but it breaks my heart that it takes this much to get this much attention. Yes. I want us all to remember that we're blazing a trail for the rest of our peers across the country. Right now we have everybody's attention. We need to keep this going. We need to make it awkward. The, the institution wants us to be quiet. They want us to forget about this. They want us to let this go. I'm telling you right now, we have them right where we want them. Let's keep this going. They might not like our message. They may not like what
what we stand for, but I guarantee you they see us now. Thank you. University like we had on Friday. I'm just telling you, I don't want to be the chancellor of the university we had on Friday. Our university has to be better than it is. And it needs all of the community to come together to do that. We need to work together. And I know you may not believe anything that I'm telling you today, <laughs> and you don't have to. It is my responsibility to earn your trust. I only have to say one thing. There is a plaque out there that speaks about 17th of November of 1973. And I was there and I don't want to forget that. So I hope that I will have a better opportunity to work with you, to meet you, to get to know you. And uh, I, there will be many opportunities in the next few weeks to do that. Thank you. afternoon. First of all, I want to say that there are over 60,000 signatures supporting the Chancellor's resignation. My name is Nick Perone and I'm a graduate student in the History Department. I'm also the recording secretary of the UAW Local 2865, the union that represents the majority of graduate student employees across the UC system. So I am a student here, I am a worker here, and I am a union representative for my colleagues across campus, and I want to make a couple quick points. First of all, the movement to occupy the quad here at UC Davis is not an attempt to replicate Occupy Wall Street or any other movement. St 
students here at UC Davis and at universities across the country have been occupying administrative buildings and open spaces in response to injustices both on and off university campuses for decades. Chancellor Katehi has worked hard to try and characterize this current occupation as being influenced by non-UC Davis affiliated individuals. Let me be very clear, this is our movement. Look around you, these are UC Davis students, these are UC Davis faculty members, and these are UC Davis workers. <laughs> Chancellor Katehi, just because our movement is growing, it does not mean that it must be the result of some outside influence, some rogue element. You and the regents that you work for have provided the fuel that drives the movement that you see today. Now the last point I want to make is that police brutality that we've witnessed over the past two weeks at Cal State Long Beach, at Berkeley, and at UC Davis, this is only a symptom of privatization. A symptom of privatization. Chancellors Katehi, Chancellor Bergenau, they want safe and inviting spaces. Safe and inviting spaces on campus, not for students, but for companies and corporations. When they suppress dissent on our campuses, it is in the interest of privatization and clearly not student safety. We must be careful not to treat the symptom alone, but attack the disease itself. The disease of privatization. <laughs> Chancellor Katehi, we will not allow you, Udolf, the regents, or anyone else to strangle the students at this university with debt and mediocrity while you simultaneously direct police to suffocate any remaining dissent. <laughs> that you are no longer our advocate. You are no longer our ally, and we need a chancellor who will stand with students against police violence. <laughs> our struggle is not your struggle. We want the rich to pay their fair share. We want lower tuition, not to raise it. We want to end the privatization of our university, and we want to stop the use of police to control peaceful protesters on college campuses here and across the country. Linda Katehi, you have lost the confidence of the students, of the faculty, of the workers, and it's time for you to go. I've just been sitting back here taking stack, and I want to point out how ridiculous it is that the media this whole time was hassling me, trying to get up, and once Chancellor Katehi left, all the media left the students and went to go follow Katehi. <laughs> understand is the only story that they're going to be covering is Katehi's resignation. Yeah! And the story that they should be following is the students right here making history. This is bad. Undergraduate student have tripled over the past 10 years as we have seen unprecedented explosion of student debt. 
Departmental budgets have shrunk as academic and non-academic workers experience diminishing benefits, swelling workloads, and non-existent job security. In the midst of the economic crisis, the regions have intensified their pursuit of the project of privatization and defunding that diminish the quality of education and as governing body of all concerned UC Davis students will prevent the Board of Regents from continuing its unbridled assault upon higher education in the state of California. Almost done. This will entail total campus participation in shutting down the operations of the university on the 28th including teaching, working, learning, and transportation, as we will collectively divert our efforts to blocking this vote. In doing so, faculty and workers assert the power and the will to effectively represent and manage ourselves. Thank you. So the proposal as it stands, general strike on the 28th in response to the Regents meeting, one of which is being held on the UC Davis campus. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take any clarifying questions right now. Come up here and stand on stack and give me clarifying questions. And that means there's, if there's any part of the proposal you want clarified. Anybody want a clarification? Shutting down the university means that all of us who make the university run, teachers, students, workers, will generally strike and cease all actions on this day. All work, all learning, all transportation. And effectively divert our energy to, to stopping the region's continued attack on higher education. Yeah, buses, parking lots, logistics would obviously have to be planned out later. Yeah. In hope of preventing the vote of the regents, that was the question. The immediate point is to block the proposed 81% undergraduate tuition increase, which will bring student fees to over $22,000 a year, as well as millions more in departmental cuts, furloughs, and layoffs for workers. We can't work out all of the individual tactical decisions right now in this space. I encourage anyone interested to come, assert yourself. It's going to be open, there's no set committee members. Every day, 6 o'clock, in the occupied Davis Quad, soon to be renamed. Before we move on to the next proposal, we're going to give you the specific numbers of the proposal that was just passed. You would be welcome. Currently, our vote calendar is being interviewed. Oh, here's one. Oh, thank you. All right, so total, there were 1,729 votes. <laughs> Wow. Of that, 1,720 were yes. Wow. There were six sideways thumbs, 23 people abstained, and three notes. Find that. 99.5. Wow. That's like better than I. <laughs> 
and I would like to table the proposal, move it to committee, and propose it again at our next GA. Thank you guys.